All right, dumpling. So today's story is about Edward Game. I'm supposed to know Ed. I don't know the man there where the police them dig him out and most of the things them in him out make out a human skin. Yeah, I'm going to talk about today. That man, him. We are talking about him today. So, Edward Gein, who was also known as Ed or Eddie, was born on August 27, 1906 to parents Augusta and George. His mom, Augusta, was said to be a fierce lady. She always a screw. You know them people, they will look like them are carry the world upon them shoulder. Always vex up, vex up. Is that them never have a good day? Mm-hmm. Augusta that you can never catch her with a pleasing face. Her face always skin up, screw up. Like me say, it look like she always have a bad day. That's Augusta. And then George, Ed father, he was an alcoholic. Him witnessing big sister and him mother drown. And he was only three years old, so him couldn't help them. So after them pass away, he was raised by his grandparents. And this must have affected George, as we can only imagine. He started drinking at a very young age. And throughout his life, there was never a point where he stopped. So, yeah. All of that, I'm... Oh, God, I feel sorry for him, because imagine, see that. And you can't do nothing for help. So, he took up drinking at a very young age. And then throughout his life, there was never a point where he put it down. Mm -mm, mm -mm. The man beat alcohol right through, right through, till him last day upon this year earth, yeah. Yeah, he was an alcoholic, I said before, dumplings. George met Augusta in his early 20s, you know, young love, I get butterfly, I always want to talk to the person, I always want the person to near you, mm-hmm. Every night on the day phone at all about how much you're not going to live together forever. All of that. Yeah. This is what I know. But it wasn't long after before they fell out of love. Like a couple months in the relationship, them nobody love each other. Mm-hmm. Just like that. Augusta, she want to rule the man. She want to tell the man what to do. When to do. When to talk. When to shut up. When to sit down. When to stand up. Yeah, she was very controlling. And then George, he was always drunk. And when him come home drunk, you know, a stagger and all of that, him always beat up Augusta. So the relationship was very, what a word, toxic. Mm -hmm. The relationship was very toxic. Yeah, I wonder if them could have just get a divorce and done. Well, Augusta had strong religious beliefs. She never believed it was right to get a divorce, so they both stayed together. Mama, Augusta ate the man like poison. And remember, me telling you, say, he never liked her neither. So the two of them ate each other and stuck in this relationship where them can't come out. Of. Yeah, well, no, no, well, not today, dear. You know, people that just get a divorce. Well, I must say, Augusta never believed in that. So the two of them stayed in the relationship. She ate him and him ate her. Yeah, I wonder if that's why her face always looks so. Because if me stuck in a summer, you know, it's somebody first in my life when me diva like see. Me give me the upset too. It, it can be, you know. It can be. So yeah, the two of them ate each other. But them just can't come out of the relationship. Or they chose not to. Alright, dumplings. And even though... The two of them eat each other like poison. Dumplings, them are big people and them are eat salt. So, they ended up having a son. His name was Henry. Now, I'm not going to tell you say, Augusta never liked Henry. No, but there was no bond between her and the little boy. Augusta felt like if she had a daughter, then maybe it would be different. So, of course, she wanted a second child. Every day, every night, Augusta pray to God to bless her with a daughter. I'm not a joke. Like, every chance she get, she go up on her knee and I pray to God. God, please, send me a daughter. 
give me a daughter i don't want a son please bless me with a daughter mm -hmm. but that never happened in 1906 edward gain was born i'm at my telling the moment augusta find out say is a little boy she gave birth to she wanted nothing to do with the baby medieval joke the woman vow for not take care of the baby. She not pay it no mind. She, me not, I don't know what is wrong with this lady. Augusta felt as if God was punishing her. So him sent her a son instead of a daughter. Woman, why your problem? Don't play the agonist way. She never want have nothing for do the baby. She no want to near it. She no want to take care of it. She, I don't understand. But as time passed, she started to accept the two of them. Cause I mean Augusta Augusta I year one them I you bring them come here. You come at about God a punish you. Woman stop chat for about God a punish you. That's why I'm your two son and go take care of the pity them the right way. Uh, what, 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 what sense with this one? So yeah. She started taking her picnic them the right way. And then again, Augusta, 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 Augusta. She full up her dirty ways, you see? She ate every woman. Every single woman from the land, Augusta ate them. She said that every female, apart from herself, a prostitute. She, she rank! She, she ordered her. You hear them something I should have to say? And dumplings, not only did she hate females, but she ate well of the man them too. She believed that the man them used the woman them for pleasure. So she just ate them. So we can just call it say, Augusta ate everybody. She don't like nobody but herself. I don't even know she love her pity them. Me just know say, she don't eat herself. But everybody else can go to hell. That's Augusta. She very rude. So this a woman yeah, she not like nobody. She not like a soul. Augusta now realized that she had two little boys that she could now brainwash into believing everything that she told them. Yeah, she have two human beings for control. Ed and Henry. She nobody care if them a man, woman or animal. She just want somebody for control and boom, she have two sons. So Augusta was going to raise these boys to be the men that she wanted them to be. Augusta and her family owned a grocery store in the small town that they were living. But Augusta didn't want her boys to be raised in that town because she said that everyone who lived there were all sinners. So she sold the grocery store and the family moved to an isolated farmhouse to start a fresh there. Dumplings, the woman bring the people in way away, way. One back up bush. Me say, when I say people, me mean her husband and her two pity them. But she has start life there. She don't want them then near nobody because remember me telling you, you know, she don't like nobody. So she take the pity them from out of the, the town where they live in her. And bring them way, 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 way one part run her somewhere. Be a bush and all of that. But them are going to start life this so. The farmhouse was miles away from the nearest town. So just them alone around this so. The two boys, Ed and Henry, were only allowed to leave the house to go to school. Not even go outside for go play. You know, look up in the go outside and play on the grass and drop on them some day. No, sir. Them don't know what that feel like. Only time them feel like a cool breeze and when them go to school. This a wickedness. This a evil. This, this, you know what? I will continue the story. This is not my business. Yeah. So them only allowed to leave the house when them go to school. Just school. And so when them go to school, kindly find them way back on the yard. And even at school, they weren't allowed to talk to anyone. It was bullied at school. And at home, his father 
would physically abuse both Ed and his brother Henry. And them could run to their mommy for little love up. You know, them could even run to her and cry. Them could talk to her. She not show them no form of love. This big old woman just cold towards everybody. She not crack a smile. She just always a frown. Me, me would go around her, no? Me I tell you not, me would go around her. You have two sons. You know, should look a boy them no love. You just a tell them all kind of evil about everybody a sinner. And this and that. So, at school, them bully head. And then when him reach home, I bear lick to him skin. In fact, I, I, I just a beat them so. And then them can run to them mommy. She now go hug them up. She now go kiss them. So, them just have to deal with it. This a sin. When Ed was 14, he left school to work on the farm. So now, him not see nobody else but him brother, him father, and him mother. Mm -hmm. Alright, dumplings, fast forward a little. Both Ed and Henry were said to be hardworking and trustworthy men. And this is when I'm at 30 something now. Ed's father, George, became really ill and passed away when Ed was 34. And it's sad for say, but you know, when a family member pass off, we cry out to eye. Because we not go see them no more. And that just sad. And it will mourn for some time. You know, until we're strong enough to get over it. Sometimes we not even get over it. But Ed, Henry, and Augusta, mighty God, the people them happy. I joke. One piece of excitement when the man, you know, gone home to glory. I guess I true him used to beat them and, you know, them not forget no more looking at them kin. So, them did happy. Honestly, them not cry, no look a tear drop, no nothing like that. Them did happy say, them not for take care of him no more. And like I said, remember, him always used to beat them up. So, yeah, no more lick. So, Mm -hmm. It's sad for stickers, you know, but their family. So after George passed off, Henry started dating a single mother. First time, the man about 36, 37, and I'm first girlfriend. Yeah, first girlfriend. Remember, my mother tell him, you know, every woman a prostitute, and the whole of them a sinner. So, I'm first girlfriend when I'm about 36, 37. Jesus, say that. I'm not even sure I'm not with it, how to treat a girl, where to do that. You know what? Back to the story, don't please. So, a few months into dating this young lady, Henry started to find out, say, all our way mother been a tell him for all this time a lie. So, him start eating mother. Like, him, him start eating woman, like, Pies, you know. Him stop listening to what she have to say and him start stand up for himself. So because Augusta could no longer control Henry, Ed became her favorite son. Ed became obsessed with his mom. He said his mom was his best friend. He believed that she was the greatest blessing to this earth. His entire world revolved around her. Henry would make fun of Ed for not having a girlfriend. So, you know, my chubby man say, Big old man like you, because at this time, Ed at 34. And I must say, Henry was 36 or 37, I'm not sure. But, you know, Henry at chubby man, I say, Big old man like you, not even have a girlfriend. And stop make mommy tell you foolishness. No, no, go so. So, I'm always at trouble. Henry always at trouble, Ed. I tease him about the fact that he never a girlfriend. And he would also say some really mean things about Augusta and Ed hated it. One day, Ed and Henry were outside working in the garden of the farmhouse. A fire started. Ed went and got some police and firemen. They all returned and of course the firemen them out of the fire. Ed led them to his brother's lifeless body. No dumplings. It wasn't confirmed how the fire actually started, but Ed told the police that Henry started the fire and it got out of control. So all of what happened was an accident. 
But listen, when the police them find anybody, not a single burn the pan him. None. No burn the pan him skin at all. There was blood rushing from his head though. Alright, so dumplings, I, you know, let me solve the maths here. Henry is no longer alive and another fire take him life. Okay? Ed was able to lead the police them right to him body. He was found on his face with blood rushing from his head. The back of him head. Yeah, the back of him head. Blood was coming from the back of his head and he was lying on his face. Remember, I know, not a single burn mark upon him. So, oh, exactly. What caused him? What, what take him life? I'm going to try to solve the one for me because me don't know. Let me tell you what happened. Let me tell you what happened. It is believed that Ed take him red alive. This was his first victim. I don't believe. Yeah, dumpling. So, that or that. Henry is no more. Now, the police them say it was an accident and they left. No, again... Henry gone and Ed and Augusta, they never cry, they never care, you know, it's sad to say what, they never care. Ed is happy because he now have a mommy to himself. Alright, dumpling, so not long after Henry's death, Augusta suffered a stroke which left her partially paralyzed. It was Ed's job now to take care of his ill mommy and he loved doing this. Ed worshipped the very ground that Augusta walked on. He was willing to do whatever to prove to Augusta that he was a good boy. Even as a child but nothing he did was ever good enough for Augusta. Ed took care of Augusta until she was able to walk again and can you believe the woman not even said thanks? When she get better, it just go back to square one. She not caring. She not having any emotion. Yeah. Not him good like my say. Sorry, not him do like my say. Never yet good enough for the woman. Yeah, never. One day, Ed and Augusta got in at the town for buy some things for the farm. Like straw. You know? Now, the specific place where them go for buy this was owned by a guy named Smith. So them reach, alright. Smith dog must do something where it never did supposed to do. And Smith start beat the dog. Alright? Now a girl run out of Smith's house and beg him for stop beat the dog. This girl was Smith's girlfriend. Me Jesus. Augusta take up the situation pan her head and start calling the girl all kind of names. She start to say the girl is a H O E. Yeah, she should have shame and she not married but she live with man and this and that. Augusta start bring down the girl, you know. Now bear in mind, dumplings, this is not Augusta's business. Augusta go there for buy straw. She just go there and Smith, me don't know the dog do like me say, but Smith start slap up the dog. And then Smith girlfriend run out of the house and tell Smith say, leave the dog, no stop, stop lick him, leave him alone. Augusta see the girl and take up the situation upon her head. She start class the girl. She start bring down the girl. She listen. She a create a scene, you know. And then a fair business, you know. Remember, Augusta never liked nobody. So she start argue with the girl. I tell the girl say she should have herself. You're not married, but you live with man. You should have shame. Yes, and a shower. She just added the most. And like I said, I can't stress it enough. Augusta is not your business. Ed have to bring her home. Go on your yard, man. Go cool off. So, yeah. Ed bring her to yard. Because she did do too much. She has one heap of problem. You know, in the town, people are look. People are hear all of this. And she not stop. It burn her. And then a she and then a fear pitney, but it burn her. So she take up the argument pan her head. Anyways, Ed bring her home. Now, after Ed bring her home, because she was so upset, 
you know she did a scream and she that cussed the girl she got another stroke and just like that she died at 67 years old jesus savior you see me tell her you see if you don't mind your business that would happen now it would happen the man of him girlfriend in him house why the bad are you I know you, I know your sister, I, I know your pitney, and then again, it's not even like you like nobody. So it should even bother you. You should just see and cut your eye, pretend like you don't see. You say you don't like nobody. Why you argue the people and for like you care? I'm just like that because you did it. I be of the most weird. You get a stroke and it take your life. So, I eat alone. Live on the farm now. It was really heartbroken when his mom passed. I first him I feel something. I mean him father passed, him brother passed, he never care. I go start alone. When his mommy passed, him feel some type of way. Like him feel sad. I don't know if him cry, but it was said that it was really heartbroken when Augusta passed. It felt as if life had no more meaning. After Augusta's funeral, Ed went home. He didn't want the house to remain exactly like how his mommy leave it. So, if she did leave her bed chaka chaka and no spread, you know, one pillar drop a ground, you have cupping there and all of that, I say he wanted to stay. He no want to trouble it, he wanted it to remain exactly like how Augusta left it. So you know him do? Yes, I see that. Ed bored up the place. Board up the room, Augusta room. Basically, board up everywhere in the house. It was just a room beside the kitchen. Him did in a everywhere else. Board up like him, nor nobody else. Now have no access to nowhere else in the house. Him just living a one small room beside the kitchen. That's all. He wanted the place to remain exactly how Augusta left it. So, he board up everywhere. And he just live in a one little, little, look, you know. Little, little, little. For real, I'm not exaggerate. One little bean room. Were clustered and chaka chaka. And, and just everything in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Ed. He stop cut him here. He stop go barber. I don't know if he da beard himself. He... Did I wear some old clothes and in a little room? It's like, I don't know. You know, it's like when people see him, they might say, you know, my mad or he might get mad. That's how he looked. Him dirty, him ear no comb, it no cut. You know, all of the ear that just are grow, him no care, him in a dirty clothes. And then, I don't think nobody got him out, but even when him de um, I just the look of room him in a, where everything from Godland in a, him just pack up everything in a the room. Him not even have space in there. I think I'm going to put a picture at the end. I don't know, because remember I say, a lot of something in there will make out of skin. So, I don't know if I can post it, but I'm going to try dumplings, you know. I'm going to try, but I'm say, Ed, him just look away. Him ear no comb, he no wash, it look like him no beard, him dirty, him goodly all a smell, and all of them someday. It was a mess. Ed started to visit the town, cause again, he had no one to talk to. The place where he spent most of his time when he was in the town was at a pub owned by a lady named Mary. Ed liked Mary because she reminded him of his mom, so he was always at the pub. But the weird part about this is... Ed didn't go to the pub to drink. He went there just to sit and stare at Mary. Eh, eh, no, eh, 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 nope. Mm -mm. No, that creepy. You not buy no -uh. Even if you don't want to buy no -uh, you not bring your little juice, you not bring your little water and sit down in there and drink. You're just in there and look on the lady. No, sir. So, yeah. And Mary... Mary didn't have a problem because she said she understood why he did it. So she never have a problem with him sit down and look on her how much hours a day, every day. Well, I don't know if I every day him go down there, but him go down there often. And she said she never have a problem because she understand 
Why him do it? You know, the town people said that Ed was very weird. He worked in the town as a babysitter from time to time. And even though they said he was weird, they also said that he was harmless, so they trusted him with their kids. Females reported feeling very uncomfortable around Ed because he would always tear at them. And everyone knew he never had a girlfriend before and he was still a virgin. So the woman them never like go around him. Fast forward again, dumplings. Ed started to read a lot of horror books. He loved reading about body mutilation, cannibalism, and grave robbing. So when him the womb, that's all him do. Read them something there. May of 1947, a little girl by the name of Georgia went missing in the town. A neighbor dropped Georgia off near our house and she did have to walk a little while before she reached for our house. But sadly, she never reached home. The citizens them come together and them search the town for her but them never find her. Evelyn, who was a babysitter, also went missing and all them find was her clothes soaked in blood. Victor Travis and Ray Burks went missing after leaving a bar one night. And Mary, remember Mary, the pub owner, the little lady where Ed always sit on a watch? Mm -hmm. She also went missing. A man went to Mary's pub one day and saw blood everywhere. Money was also on the floor and Mary was nowhere to be found. He immediately contacted the police who began searching for Mary but had no leads. Nobody never seen her own. There wasn't no camera so Mary was never found sadly. Mary was a very important person in the town. Alright, don't get me wrong. Everybody important. You know what I mean. She was a well-respected elder. The citizens them sometime would have sit down and talk about her. You know, and I said things like, I wonder when Mary there. I wonder if she'll come back. I hope she alright. To miss Mary you now. One day, Ed and a group of men were in the pub drinking. And someone said, I wonder when Mary there. And Ed said, Mary is not missing. She's back at my farmhouse. And nobody never take him serious. They all laughed. Because, again, they all knew Ed to be weird and make weird jokes. So, nobody never took pay him no mind. And you see? I threw the boy attacking her. And because he's so weird, they just said, mm -hmm, a joke. A joke he make. And now, nah, listen to him. One time, Ed walked up to Mary, cut her apron string and said, Go home and enjoy your Christmas, cause it might be your last. And I bet she never take it as nothing. She go to the skin her teeth and she threw the boy a talk. What, what kind of man this man? And them have him round them pitney them. Well, them never know still, but you know, like, him creepy. And him a do all of them something here and a laugh. I think a joke him a make. And a joke him a make. Some time passed and a 58 year old lady by the name of Bernice went missing. Now Bernice, she owned a hardware store. And one day a guy, you know, him go by the hardware store for buy something. You know, for purchase something. But the store was locked. And this store there never normally lock. Bernie's son came home and unlocked the hardware store. Him start look around the place. I wonder where mother for that day. He saw a trail of blood on the floor. And like anyone would, he called the police. So the police then up on them way. Bernie's son checked the receipt book to see if Bernie's was at the store in the morning. And if she made any sales. Which she was. And she had been making sales. The last thing she sold was a gallon of antifreeze. Ed was at the hardware store the day before. And he asked how much for the antifreeze. You know him tell him say. He never have enough money for him. He just want to know how much for it. He come back and buy tomorrow. So there and then. 
when Bernie son si say the last thing was she sell was an antifreeze, him know who was the last person that did the hardware store. And he knew exactly who did this to his mom. When police reached the hardware store, Bernie son told them that Ed had his mom. So, you know, he didn't tell the police them. You know, he didn't just tell them, say, listen, I had a var. Of course, he explained to them and all of that. So after that, the police them went straight to Ed Yard. Because, yeah, them have to go see what go on. You know, in him last day at the hardware store, him, him purchased the antifreeze, which the boy no mad. I threw my talk, I ate go there last, go buy the buckle of antifreeze. So, yeah. Like I say, the police them gone at Ed house, and when them reach, Ed not the home. So, some of the police them stay at Ed house, while some of them drive back in the town for try find Ed. News start spread through the town. Jesus say that. The people them a panic, of course, because them a say, Ed, and imagine my having run my pinny them, my baby see my pinny them. Listen, no one knew if these rumors were true, but you know, them here a little mix up and them a go run with it, whether it's true or false or not. Listen, we're not take nothing, mm -mm. we're not a chance, no. Mm. We are keep ourselves safe, and you know, if them goodly see Ed a come, them goodly run in, go lock up and all of that. That's what I would do. Me hear all of this a, a, a spread around the town and me see you a come, now run my run, girl, if you, sir. Yeah, so, you know, the news has spread like wildfire. Everybody a chat. Only know it go. Once somebody start talking about something, it a go spread. Everybody a go talk about it. And like I say, remember, Ed always in the town, in the talk. Yeah, everybody say I'm weird. Him always a stare upon the girl then because him never yet get a woman for himself. He's like 34 and never yet have a girlfriend. Him not know for talk to woman. Him just not know, you know. And plus, him did a babysit. So everybody just afraid and uh, say, oh my God, if this is true, it could have been any one of us. So yeah, that did a go on in the tone. But like I say, the police them gone for see them can find Ed, while some of them remain at Ed's house. All right, dumplings. Fast forward a little bit now. So. The police them eventually find Ed. Some people said he was at the pub. Some people said he was on the road a walk. Others said he was at the grocery store. I don't mean, know exactly where the police them find Ed, but I know say them find him. So he was taken to the station. And Ed, when the police them asked him question, he not answer. He just sit down and look upon them. So, yeah, Adata go on at the station. All them ask him question. Him just sit down and look. Like, him not hear them. And I bet the police them get annoyed. Because, sir, me I talk to you. Why why you not answer? That is very disrespectful. You not answer. But, yeah, Adata go on at the station. We are going to go back at the house now. Until no all we are going. So, back at the house. Dumplings. Right here, so graphic. Now give me a warning, right here so graphic. So, so if you don't know what you all of this, listen, I completely understand how you can mix it. It's okay. So dumplings. Alright, we're gonna talk now. Inside Ed's house, the local room where I'm staying. I remember me telling about the local room where I'm in and I know choke up in there smell bad. It did dark. The place did choke up, like I say. It have everything in there. I just in there so him stay so you know everything him put in there i can't stress it enough all the room did choke up so the police them did have flashlights to help them stay around the place so you know they would trip over anything one of the officers as he walked through ed's room door him feel something brush pan him shoulder so him frightened and spin around fast with him flashlight you know yeah walk and someone rub on your shoulder especially in a dark room, it could be anything. So I'm frightened and just turn on and shine the flashlight. The policeman see Bernice's lifeless body hanging up by her feet. Bernice was decapitated, gutted, and cleaned out. The policeman ball out and run outside and start vomit. Like, I'm frightened to see that Jesus saved me. That's that piece. But that's a fire. A piece, so piece, so piece, so. 
Yeah, cause that's scary. All right, back inside. Bernie's intestines were found wrapped up inside a jacket suit and her heart was found in a plastic bag on the floor in front of the stove. One of the police saw a bag on the floor and when he opened it, steam came out of it and inside was Bernie's head. Lord of mercy. Ed put two nails in both of Bernie's ears and bent them so they looked like a hook. And then he tied a rope on both of these nails so that he could hang Bernie's head in his house as a decoration. The police also found a paper bag with some air. And when he took the air out of the bag, a face came up too. So, Ed cut someone's skin off of their face and the air that the police found was still attached to it. So, it's like a mask made from human skin. And that face that the officers just found was Mary's face. The lady where Ed sit down and watching at the pub, she may attack. Police found four chairs and the seats were all made from human flesh. They found lampshade made from human skin and human faces. They found a basket made from human skin and inside the basket were human bones and remains. On Ed's bedpost, there were skulls, human skulls. That he used as decoration. Also, he made his eating bowls out of skulls. So I'm telling you what I'm doing. I'm soft the top and like fix the bottom so nothing can run out. Yeah, so I'm soft the top. I open up. I don't want to take my can post the picture of them in you know? a I'm not take my can post the picture of them. So I'm soft the top of the skull right there. So saying so you have an opening right there. And down where the mode part for there, like Picture of skull down where the mouth part there. I think I don't know when put down there so, but he put something down there so to prevent things from leaking out. So he basically make a plate out of the skull. Like I said, I don't know if I can post the images, so I just have to try describe it as best as I can, dumplings. A shoebox was found containing nine different female lower body parts, private parts. And Ed painted one of these grey and placed a little red bow on it. I don't know why, but yeah, Ed, he really cut out the girl, them tun tun and put it in another something. True man. Alright, four noses were found in another box and... Inside a cereal box were scraps of human head skin. His table was made out of human shin bones. The table put them. The jawstring on one of Ed's window shades had two pair of human lips as a puller. Police found a container of fingernails. Also a dress that belonged to one of the teenage girls that went missing. Police found in a box. Human face masks that head from time to time dressed up in. He made clothes from his victim's skin that he also wore. He made leggings, gloves, an apron and a belt that was made from female nipples. He also made a coat from the torso skin of a woman which had breasts and all of that on it. Yeah, Ed, when may I say dumplings, he make all of them something here and then... From time to time, him put them on and stand up in the him dress up like a female and stand up in the mirror. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So back to what I was saying, we just have to explain that so I no wonder where me at all. Oh. So let like me say, yeah, it had breasts and all of that on it and he called this his mammary vest. Ed told police that he would dress up as a woman when he was at home. And, of course, this was after his mom passed. Now, psychologists believe that Ed was either dressing up as his mom because he loved and worshipped her so much. Or, he was dressing up as a girl to feel like something his mom wanted. Because, remember, Augusta wanted a girl child. And she told her son this too. She tell him, say, me never want a boy. A girl me did want. Just to make them know, say, me not want to, you know. Me never wanted it to begin with. 
I wanted girls. So yeah, psychologist believes that Ed did I dress up as a mommy or him just did I dress up as a girl to feel like something his mom would have wanted. Because remember, him do everything for try to please this woman and no him do was never good enough for her. So yeah. Others believe that Ed was just fascinated with the female body because again, he never yet have a girlfriend. All him life, he never yet their own woman, only mother. So, yeah. Ed used motor oil to treat the face mask like a moisturizer. He put lipstick on the lips. Ed would put the mammary vest on that had breasts on it. A human face mask and sometimes he would stick the female genitals to himself and stand in front of the mirror listen dumplings this story was massive everyone now knew about ed and what he had done now ask if everybody not afraid everybody afraid because i must say it always in other town you used to watch the baby them oh god man all right so back at the station Ed had been there for 13 hours and said nothing. Absolutely nothing at all. All the police them attacked, them talked till them blew. It just did a look on them. Him just not answer all my question. Him, him just did a look on him. Pan them, sorry. Him not said nothing at all. Then the police them tell him them find Bernie's body at his house. And at this point, Ed just knew they saw everything already. So, what was the point of him remaining quiet? Ed agreed to tell the police everything only if they got him a slice of apple pie with cheese on it. Jesus, God. But your chest, I, you would have swallowed your spit. After you do all of that, you want apple pie with cheese on it. Mm. So, yeah, him tell the police, them say, but we'll tell them everything, you know. But first, you know, I forget me, a slice of apple pie with cheese on it. And the police, them, do just that. They went and got Ed the apple pie. He ate it, belch, and told the police everything they wanted to know. Ed told police that he only took Mary and Bernie's life. He stole the other bodies from graves. He said he did this more than 40 times, but only took home bodies with him nine times. Police, obviously, I wonder if he's a liar or not. Ed bring them, go show them to the grave them when rob. And yeah, the grave them dig up. The coffins were empty. Ed was telling the truth. Remember the persons who went missing? It was never confirmed if Ed was responsible for that. But people believe that I Ed, them say, yeah, I him do it. And most of them tell the police a lie, but the part where him say, you know, him rob the grave them, that are true. Him say him go there 40 times for do it, and only 9 times him bring one bodies with him, because he was always grossed out, and him always changing mind. So, I just 9 times, him end up, take out the body them, and bring them home. Mm-hmm. Court time. Ed was found not guilty by reasons of insanity and was sent to live the rest of his life in a mental health hospital. And Ed's farmhouse, it was burned down. No one knew who started the fire, but everyone was happy that it was gone, said one of the ladies that lived in the town. And me said it, and them say them said them happy say bundung because them now for look panic no more. And before it burned down, people treated it like tourist attraction them go front to take picture and all of that oh why hmm? anyways dumplings that is the story of edward gain all right mm -hmm. but no jesus savior never know them something are possible me never know <sighs> all right dumplings you know what for do subscribe like the video if you enjoy it. Leave a comment down below. Tell me what you think. I want to know. I alone can not have messed up thoughts. I want to know. I have an answer. I don't know I like to talk. I have an answer. No. So subscribe. Like the video. Comment down below. And share it.
you know me i go link on the back i think on monday all right dumplings and you know my love you know. bye Mwah.